I think Factfulness is a book that every person who works with data must read. And here is why. Factfulness is a book by Hans Rosling, Anna Rosling Rönlund, and Ola Rosling. Hans Rosling is very known in Sweden because he's a Swedish doctor and a statistician, and he's known in the world because he did a lot of TED Talks showcasing how the world is better than we think and how our worldview is overdramatic. If you work in data and visualization, especially in Sweden, you've probably seen his TED Talks where he's moving around the board, showing like the bubbles of the countries uh, and the improving changes in the death rate and um, the world overall. And I think his book is a very positive and very optimistic, but actually, as he tells himself, realistic and probabilistic way of looking at the world. I've been reading quite a few books recently about different data gaps and the problems that we have in data and issues. There are also a lot of documentaries that you might have seen, like Data Bias on Netflix or The Social Dilemma on Netflix as well, which are great and they're showcasing the issues that we have in the world because we live in the world of data and this data is available to various companies to, for example, target ads for us. But also, I feel like those documentaries are very dramatic and they're kind of created to make you feel a certain way. Whereas the Factfulness book helps you to calm down because the world is not as bad as it seems. The issues we currently have, we are kind of lucky to have those issues because just 50 years ago, for many, many, many of us in many different countries, life was so much harder and tougher and more challenging and more dangerous. And overall, this is the premise of the book. Like we are really into getting this dramatic worldview because of the media, because of the data points that we have, because of the lack of positive news in our world. And the book brings you that more realistic and probabilistic and optimistic perspective onto the world. So here I want to share three quotes or maybe four quotes that I really enjoyed that I think are super applicable to work as a data scientist, but also to anyone who lives in the current world and needs to make decision based on data, which is pretty much any of us. The first point is extremely important. I would love if all of the stakeholders that I work with would do that and it's compare the numbers. The quote goes the following way, compare the numbers. The most important thing you can do to avoid misjudging something's importance is to avoid lonely numbers. Never ever leave a number all by itself. Never believe that one number on its own can be meaningful. If you're offered one number, always ask for at least one more, something to compare it with. Be especially careful about big numbers. It's a strange thing, but numbers over a certain size, when they're not compared with anything else, always look big. And how can something big not be important? How can something big not be important? This is a super fantastic quote and it's about how we evaluate the world based on data. And it comes over and over in the meetings and in the work that I do as a data scientist when I provide a number or any other person provides a number. Let's say we at some company, not at the company currently work for, but at some company we have 30 million daily active users. What do you think? Is that a lot? Is that too little for Facebook? If they would have 30 million daily active users, it would be a catastrophe. It means that pretty much Facebook is down most places in the world and they will have to take drastic and immediate action for a small startup. 30 million daily users may mean that they just blew up and it's an incredible thing and they might have to take different actions for example i don't know provide more services or increase their capacity in amazon web services for their service they're providing on its own this number 30 million doesn't really mean anything when i create presentations or reports i like to always present things in perspective relative to previous period or relative to a different number from a different product or relative to the control group of an A-B test. So not just showing like we have this number of users, but is it getting better? Is it getting worse? Is it a lot? Is it too little? How is it about comparing to our competitors? 
what does this number actually mean? This is also a great advice for your own sake in the world that we live in to not just take a number from a newspaper on its own. Five million people died from this disease this year. This sounds horrible, especially if it's a giant phone to the newspaper and on the front page. But if there is no other number to compare it to, how do you know if it's actually bad? How do you know whether maybe last year 10 million people died and this year there is 50% decrease and this is amazing? Or maybe, yes, maybe one person died last year and now it's 5 million and that's horrible. But without comparison, you never know. And a lot of times we don't invest enough effort into comparing something we see or hear somewhere with other numbers. So really recommend doing that. Love this book for saying this out loud. Super valuable, whether you're a data scientist or just a person who reads news on the internet. Quote number two that I really like is related to kind of a work bias that a lot of people who work with data tend to start having after some time. They trust numbers a lot and want to rely only on the quantitative evidence, only on the hard number evidence. And it goes like this. Numbers, but not only numbers. The world cannot be understood without numbers, and it cannot be understood with numbers alone. Love numbers for what they tell you about real lives. Love this quote as well, because it tells you that behind all the numbers, behind these daily active users or interactions or engagement or numbers of clicks you receive on your product, there are real people and it's super valuable to look into how they actually interact with the product, how they perceive it. Things that are really hard to measure with numbers, like whether they're happy or not, even if you run a survey, that's not really a necessary, um, a very reliable way to measure happiness. So work with your user researchers who know why things happen, not just what happens and how much. And that's really common also in the companies that just grow their data and analytics divisions. They start with data and they tend to get very focused on data, but they forget sometimes about the actual user part because the collaboration between data scientists and user researchers is very useful and very seamless. The data scientist can tell you what happens and how much, and the user researcher can try to attempt to answer why this happens, why the users behave a certain way. Really valuable. Numbers are not the only thing that's there in the world and don't look at only numbers because they can't explain everything. Next quote is not really related to data, but I like how it reflects on our society and it goes the following way. It seems that it comes very naturally for us to decide that when things go wrong, it must be because of some bad individual with bad intentions. We like to believe that things happen because someone wanted them to, that individuals have power and agency. Otherwise, the world feels unpredictable, confusing, and frightening. The blame instinct makes us exaggerate the importance of individuals or of particular groups. This instinct to find the guilty party derails our ability to develop a true fact-based understanding of the world. It steals our focus as we obsess about someone to blame, then blocks our learning because once we've decided who to punch in the face, we stop looking for explanations elsewhere. This undermines our ability to solve the problem or to prevent it from happening again, because we are stuck with oversimplistic finger pointing, which distracts us from the more complex truths and prevents us from focusing our energy in the right places. Ah, oh, I love this quote. This is amazing. This is so, so, so incredibly true. Instead of finding someone to blame, just try to learn from this situation. I mean, I don't think I can say anything else here more than it already says. Super valuable. Systems are bigger than people. People alone rarely become the problem because systems are enabled by multiple people. Like gender data gap that we have in the data that we're collecting from the world is not because some researcher who did a study maybe, I don't know, into the fifties only on the male bodies decided that's how we're going to do it. There were so, so, so many people who contributed to this data gap with regards to gender or any other characteristics. And it's not just one person's responsibility. It's everyone's responsibility to counteract that and 
try to change the system and learn from these problems and learn from those mistakes. Really love this quote. It also talks about the value of the team effort. And there is a positive spin on this quote as well in the book that says, finally, look for systems, not heroes. When someone claims to have caused something good, ask whether the outcome could have happened anyway. And even if that individual had done nothing, give the system some credit. Again, now in the society, we're really inclined into creating like this one person is responsible for everything. Like Elon Musk did create a Tesla, but it's not just Elon Musk. Maybe he had the fantastic ideas and did a lot of guidance and leadership, but there are so, so many people working on this, improving this. There are so many people outside of Tesla improving uh, the value of electronic vehicles and pushing the knowledge and the studies and the science forward. There are people who create the stations where you can charge them. Like it's, it's, it's not just one person, it's all the system together. So really, really love this quote. Honestly, not much I can say here. There's usually not just one person to thank or not just one person to blame. Oh, there's another quote that I really like. Okay, <laughs> there's one more quote that I want to share. Maybe two more. Bear with me. Fantastic book. Really recommend reading it. It's just like a lot of golden nuggets. The quote goes the following. A long jumper is not allowed to measure her own jumps. A problem-solving organization should not be allowed to decide what data to publish either. The people trying to solve a problem on the ground who will always want more funds should not also be the people measuring progress that can lead to really misleading numbers. Again, I don't think there is a lot I can add to this quote because it just speaks on its own. And it's pretty much about if you are an interested person in something, you should not be allowed to measure the value of something because you're an interested party. So if you are a project manager who really, really, really wants to launch this feature, you should work with data scientists to be able to clearly in an unbiased way determine how you're going to measure the success of this feature. Not you alone. You cannot decide that you measure it based on that metric because this metric can be favorable and not include all the other potential impact of the feature that you're launching. Super, super great, super great nugget, um, really valuable at work as well. And the quote which I would like to finish this video on is factfulness is recognizing when a decision feels urgent and remembering that it really isn't. To control the urgency instinct, take small steps, take a break, take a breath. <laughs> when your urgency instinct is triggered, your other instincts kick in and your analysis shuts down. Ask for more time, more information. It's rarely now or never. It's rarely either or. Insist on the data. If something is urgent and important, it should be measured. Beware of data that is relevant but inaccurate or accurate while irrelevant. Only relevant and accurate data is useful. Oh, so true. Thank you for watching. Please go read the book. Very great, very valuable. At least go watch his TED Talks and get inspired and maybe feel a little bit better about the world we live in. It's not as dramatic as it seems. Thank you for your time. Hope this was fun and useful and have a nice day.